I actually know what you're thinking right now. You're thinking, where did you get that awesome hat? And what's its surface area? Because that's what you always wonder about hats. So hey guys, we got a party hat here. The shape is a cone. And the question is, what's its surface area? How could you figure that out? You might be like, well, that's weird. What would it be? But if you remember back to when we did cylinders, like maybe it would be helpful to cut it open and unroll it. So let's cut it open and unroll it. What do we have now? This looks to me like a piece of a circle. This is a sector of a circle. So, hey, if you know how to find the area of a sector of a circle, you're good to go, right? What do you do to find the area of a sector of a circle? It's gonna be some fraction of a circle, right? So you could just find the area of the whole circle. Wait, how do we do that? We measure the radius, right? We measure the radius. We do pi times the radius squared, area of a circle formula, cool, right? Okay, that's the area of the whole circle. We have some proportion of that. What proportion do we have? Well, generally when we did sector problems, we measured the central angle, or we're given the central angle, and we know that that is some fraction out of 360 degrees. So then you get a nice equation. This fraction out of 360 equals x, your sector area, out of the entire area, which you can calculate using the radius. Cool, easy to do, right? Except for one problem. Let's roll this cone back up. I can't measure that angle. There is no angle, right? The angle, the central angle of this sector doesn't exist when the cone is rolled up. Ugh. Okay, can we at least get the radius of the circle? I want you to visualize that right now. The radius of this circle, right, this length, where is it when the cone is rolled back together? Aha, now that's something we can actually measure. So we can get the slant, the, this, this is called the slant height, by the way, but the slant height of the cone is the radius of this circle sector, right? Okay, cool, we at least have that, but we don't have this angle here. But remember, what do we use that angle for? We're using it to figure out what proportion of the whole circle that we have, what proportion of the whole circle we have. What if there was another way to do this? Hmm. Well, it might help to notice that there's not one circle in this problem. There's actually two circles in this problem. Wait, what's this circle? There's a circle at the bottom of the cone, right? Hey, neat, there's a circle at the bottom of this cone. But that circle is a lot smaller than this circle. But aren't circles all similar? You could just do a dilation of one circle to get another. If you're not familiar with that idea, then you know, let's, let's remind ourselves I can dilate myself right now. Look at that, I'm dilating myself. How am, I, how am I doing that? What is a dilation? I'm multiplying both dimensions by the same amount to make myself some percentage bigger or smaller. While I'm small here, how about we actually pop in to another screen? Boom, where I've got some things drawn out here that might be kind of helpful. Okay, what am I getting at here? Well, let's think about these two circles that we've going on, right? The one that we are, I have a sector of and then like the circle at the bottom of the cone. So the circle at the bottom of the cone has a radius, right? Has a radius here, I'll draw that in. I'll call that radius R, because that's the radius of the circle on the cone. And I'm drawing this kind of, this is the perspective drawing on the cone, but what if I like drew that same circle here with a nice top down view so we got a better look at it, right? Okay, there's that circle, there's its radius, that is R. Now. Remember, when we unroll the party hat and we get our sector of a circle, it's a piece of a larger circle. And that's what I have drawn right above me. There's the large circle with just a little sector kind of cut out so we can see that it's a sector of a larger circle. Well, I'm not gonna call that radius R because it's not the same radius, so I shouldn't use the same thing. Now, remember it is the slant height of the cone, right? Remember when we open that up? It's the slant height of the cone. Well, most people, um, or many math texts and all that, use a cursive L, a little lowercase cursive L, to stand for slant height. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna say that that is the slant height of the cone, but remember that if we can unroll the cone, right, if we can unroll the cone, that is the radius of the circle that we have going on there, right? Okay. So remember how we're doing our, our circle sector area thing, right? So let's call our sector area A. 
So the area that we're looking for is the area of this sector. I'm going to call that A. And then I know that, that it is some proportion of the full circle area based on this circle with this radius. What was that radius? That radius was L, right? That radius was L. But wait, that radius is L, but what's the area of the circle? L is the radius of that circle. What's the area of that circle? Pi times the radius squared. So pi times L squared. So I'm setting up a proportion here. The area of this sector is some fraction out of the area of the entire circle. Oh man, I wish I could get an equal proportion to then have like a cross multiply and solve kind of a situation. Can I get that? Hmm. How can I get that? Well, follow me for a second here. Do you agree that the blue length here, this blue circumference, right? The blue circumference I'm outlining there, right? Blue, where am I pointing? Blue circumference there. That's the same thing. Look, look, when this is rolled up, let's unroll it for a second. Whoa, isn't that this, this outline of this sector piece here, right? That's the outline of the sector piece right here. Those two things are equal. Whoa, okay, how is that helpful to me? Well, follow me for a second here. Follow me for a second here. Okay, so I have my sector has this blue piece, right? That blue piece, which is some fraction out of the entire circle circumference, right? The entire circle, it's some proportion out of that. So in other words, the blue out of the red, or you know whatever color that is, is a proportion, right? It's the proportion that my sector is out of the entire circle. Well, the blue is a piece of the circumference, Okay, it's a piece of the circumference, but remember it's equal to the circumference of that circle. And we could get that. We have a circumference formula. The circumference, form circumference formula is pi times the diameter or two times pi times the radius, right? Since a diameter is two copies of the radius. So we have that, right? And that again is equal to that blue piece we have of the sector. Now, Remember, by the same reasoning, on this larger circle, I meant to switch over to my other color, on this larger circle, where my head's going to be in the way, we have the circumference being 2 times pi times the radius of this circle, which is L. Ah, head out of the way. Okay, so what do we do with that? What do we do with that? That's our proportion. That's our equal proportion. That's a proportion that we have for our sector out of its whole circle, which means I can throw that in. Can I move myself so I'm out of the way here? Ah, that's moving the wrong thing. Move me. There I go. Okay. <laughs> um, so we have 2 pi r out of 2 pi l. And I meant to do that in red. Let's do that in red. 2 pi L. It's more of a magenta. I don't know, man. Anyway. Okay, so what are we going to do with this? Well, I, what I want you to do right now is looking over at that equation. Can you simplify anything right now? Can anything just reduce out of this problem? Are there fractions that can reduce here? Well, if you have a times 2, again, you can pause the video and think for yourself here. But if you have a times 2 and a divide by 2, 2 on the top and the bottom, that reduces to 1. And multiplying and dividing by 1 doesn't do anything. That reduces out of the problem. But isn't the same thing happening with the pi? That reduces out of the problem? Which means that this whole thing can just turn into r over l, which is kind of nice, right? So we've got r over l right here. Cool. So my formula is simplifying. Now, what do we want to do here? We want to solve for A. Remember, A was the area of the sector of the circle. That's what we're actually looking for. I want to solve for A. How am I going to do that? Well, I think it would make sense to get rid of this stuff on the bottom of the fraction. So how could I do that? I could multiply both sides by pi 
L squared. If I multiply and divide by the same thing, it cancels out, but I have to do it to both sides of the equation, pi L squared. Okay, so, and remember, you, you could think of this having a one on the bottom and these multiply together and basically combine into one fraction where the L times the one is gone. So let me rewrite what we have here. That's what we have here, right? Okay, can anything else reduce? Can anything else reduce? Do you see anything that's the same on the top and the bottom? You might be like, well, there's an L squared and there's an L. Can that reduce? Yes, because remember what L squared means. If I wrote that instead of as an L squared, if I wrote that as a L times an L, which is what L squared means, then it might be more obvious that one of those L's can reduce with the L on the bottom as a multiply by L, divide by L, that's just a one, that reduces out. And what are we left with now? I'm left with R times pi times L. Now, this isn't that important, but usually we will write the constant in front of the variables, the constant here being pi. So usually you will see this written in a slightly different order. You'll see the pi written in front of the R and the L, and you will see this written as pi R L, pi R L. I meant to be on my eraser, pi R L. L, I can draw. There we go, guys. Okay. So that gets us to this. The area of that sector is pi times r times l. And notice that those are nice measurements that you had in your original cylinder, not cylinder, geez, I can speak, cone that you had at the very beginning, right? Those are measurements that we actually had. Now, one thing, though, is that this is actually just the lateral surface area. Okay, the lateral surface area of a cone is just the, you know, the party hat, right? If you had an actual cone, there would be a circle on the bottom. So let's make this the uh, final answer here. So this is the lateral surface area of a cone. Now, what would be the area of the blue circle, right? What's the area of the blue circle that would actually be stuck on the bottom of the cone? Well, that's just pi times the radius squared, right? So the total surface area... The total surface area is going to be pi r l plus the blue circle, right? We'll drop that blue circle uh, down here, and we'll get pi r squared. And I'm in the way again. Good thing I can fly. Ah, wait, can ah, there we go. Much better. Okay, there is the total surface area for a cone. We did it, guys. I knew you could do it. Congratulations. That's a tricky one. Now, you can actually solve these types of problems. Just plug in the radius and the slant height into that formula, and now you understand where the formula comes from instead of just using it. Have an excellent day, and let me know in the comments if you have any questions or anything.